Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about dementia and hearing loss. Coming right up. So when a patient comes up with this possible diagnosis of dementia, and especially the family member, we see a lot of fear. And I understand that fear. Actually, more recently, someone gave me a stroke diagnosis because I did have a stroke. Now I recovered and it's a really interesting story that we will talk about in future episodes, but I completely recovered. Now, you might say, hey, how do I re completely recover? Well, that's for the physicians to talk to you about and that's for your faith as well. But we all have this issue of death staring us in the face. And we think, boy, this is really not a fun video to talk about, but it's a true video. Now, when you think about dementia, sometimes you go to this other diagnosis called Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is actually a subcategory of dementia that you need to be really careful with because dementia categories are Parkinson's, you know, it can't even come by HIV. We see people with closed head injuries, vascular, um, it could be something that you eat. It could be a detox reaction uh, from alcohol. It could be a drug interaction. Maybe, you know, you've had some drug interactions over the years. We see all kinds of ways that happen. Now, I don't want to get into all the all those uh, areas of diagnoses, but they actually come in in the when I first was in grad school, we only had four stages of Alzheimer's or excuse me of dementia. Now we have seven stages all the way from one to seven and seven is obviously when someone is dying or death. But the first stages of dementia, the first few, that person is relatively aware and that person is struggling to communicate and you might see a flat affect. They'll just look around. You're kind of wondering what's going on behind the eyes there. Do you know that if a person has dementia, we don't know it. And you say, well, what do you mean? What do you mean you, you don't know it? You see, psychologists have to do other kinds of neurological tests. They also do psychological tests to assess that person. Now, the problem with every psychologist and psychiatrist and neurologist in the United States is one simple thing. We have no idea what that person's hearing. What? Did you know that no psychologist, neurologist, psychiatrist ever asks for a hearing test unless they sense a severe hearing loss, like the person they're screaming at them to talk to them? That's ridiculous. The audiologist needs to be a part of that role so that we know the abilities of the person. I'm not trying to beat those people up, but they're not thinking about it. I'll give you an example. I was meeting with this one physician years ago and uh, he had kind of a horseshoe office. And I'm back there in one of his little offices waiting for him to come in. And I can hear him screaming down the hallway. He's like, 40 milligrams. What? You're going to kill me with 60 milligrams. 40. And they're ba arguing back and forth this 40 and 60 milligram issue. And, and I'm sitting there going, okay. So as soon as he comes in the office, I'm like, have you ever had anyone with hearing loss? He's like, Dude, that was like a HIPAA violation down the hallway. He goes, well, I always have to speak loudly to my um, elderly patients. That's exactly hearing loss. It's not like a person who's 60, 70, 80, 90 years old suddenly just can't hear anything. Well, you go, 
Well, yeah, that is the case, but that's why we have audiology. Do you know that I have had patients that we have knocked them down in that seven step role, that seven stages of Alzheimer's, and we have knocked them down at least one category by having good amplification in the ears. Do you want to communicate with your loved ones? Do you want to be around them? Do you want to have those last moments of life, those months, those years of life? One of the most startling patients I ever, I ever dealt with, and I remember this is, gosh, 15 years ago, and the son and the mom came in and said, we have six months to live. And I was like, well, we? Well, I talk for my mom all the time. She has six months to live. I was like, really? And we want to get some help with her hearing. I'm like, well, that's pretty expensive, you know, to pay out of pocket for six months. It's worth it. It changed my whole viewpoint on that. Not, not just from a monetary standpoint, but they were pushing me to get help with their hearing. And she, she definitely had a significant hearing loss. And do you know, nine months later, he showed up with her hearing aids and we donated it to the Starkey Foundation. And they were like, it's the best thing that we ever did. Why? Because they had stuff to talk about. And I watched patients who we thought, well, she's just never gonna be able to communicate with us. Communicate. So that psychologist, the, the psychiatrist, that neurologist has to have an audiological evaluation before they do the neurological test, before they see what, what the brain is accepting, because we accept information here before we get it here. And that is a really important part that we need to look at. You see, that stimulation to the brain improves that ability for you to understand what people are talking about. It's very important to me. And I take this very seriously when we're in the office. And you're gonna see my other audiologist and you can see me, but I promise you, you need to get help with your hearing if you suspect dementia. Because the first step is to know that before we address the neurological issues. So come see us, subscribe. We're here for you. Thank you so much.